Hello and welcome to Advanced Aviation Training's discussion on aviation learning pathways. The information contained in this lecture will be available on our website, advancedaviation.com.au. First of all, uh, Advanced Aviation Training, our team is made up of industry professionals that have been uh, training, flying, working in the industry for many, many years. And it's their passion to be able to pass this information on to you through the uh, way of aviation training. Our location's at a beautiful Red Cliff, just uh, 25 minutes north of Brisbane, Queensland. We have a nice little infomercial on our website uh, hosted by the lovely Katrina Roundtree that will give you an indication of what the area is actually like. Reference to our services, we offer a broad range of services. We're trying to make advanced aviation training the one-stop aviation shop and uh, it's constantly growing. But at the moment today, we're just gonna be talking about the flight training side of it. Before we look at uh, what Recreational Aviation Australia is about and Civil Aviation Safety Authority, let's just have a look at a little bit of an industry overview. The industry, this is showing pre-COVID numbers of passengers um, and we're up around the 6 million passengers carried within Australia. And this is through the Bureau of Infrastructure and Transport Research and Economics website. We had the major drop in passenger numbers through COVID. We're all locked into our houses and rooms and we started getting vaccinated and things picked up. So as of April 2023, we're just over the um, 50 million passengers again. So it has bounced back. Traditionally in the industry, we've had the oil crisis in the 80s. We've had SARS, bird flu, there's been a drop and it's generally bounced back higher than ever. We're still working on that, but we're not far away from it. One of the problems with that was a lot of uh, pilots were coming up to retirement. They were baby boomer era pilots have retired and not come back. So perhaps that we're not getting the numbers we needed. We've just gone through the mid-year school holiday crisis with not enough uh, flight crew for aircraft. We're starting to feel the pinch and we're not getting up back to where we should be. Currently on SEEK, there's 400 pilot jobs listed for different airlines, different aviation organisations. As of those 400 jobs listed, there's multiple positions available. A good indication of whether there is a shortage in any industry in Australia is to look at the Australian Visa website. Currently in Australia, we're offering both 482 and 491 visas for international pilots to come over and work within Australia, which is a direct indication that we do not have enough. If we go to the um, Boeing website, we can have a look at the, the, their predictions for pilot numbers in the industry. So at the moment, we're looking at 602,000 pilots over the next 20 years, a total of 2,111,000 pilots, engineers and cabin crew. We can break that down into the Oceania region. At the moment, we're looking at 37,000 aviation positions. A quarter of those is pilot positions. So we're talking about nine to 10,000 pilot positions in this region. There has never been a better time in the aviation industry to become a pilot. If it's your career choice at the moment, you're thinking in school, what am I gonna do? But you would like to become a pilot, airline pilot, whatever avenue you wanna to go to. Like I said, today, now is the best time to get there. In the past, historically training has been conducted through trial and error. Flight training was mostly brought about by World War I into World War II, and then it's become more into the civil aviation areas. In the history of training, one of our main first instructors that wrote the flight instructor manual was uh, Robert Smith Barry, who worked at Central Flying School for the Air Force. And a lot of the content that he developed then was still being used today. Flight training now is being looking more into safety aspects. What did that pilot do wrong? How can we now train that out of the next group of pilots? So we do a lot of accident investigation. We look into how we can make things safer and better for the traveling public. There are many pathways in aviation. So you might want to be an airline pilot. You might want to be a crop duster. You might want to be a helicopter pilot. Uh, so there's many, many opportunities for different things. It's made up of the main governing body, which is CASA, which is the Civil Aviation Safety Authority. They oversee and regulate everything in the way of flight training standards, safety standards, registration of aircraft, maintenance of aircraft. What we have under them is Recreational Aviation Australia. They're the first Australian Part 149 operation, which means they're self-managed under the CASA oversight. 
Civil Aviation Safety Regulations or CASRs are made up of different parts. Part 61 being flight training, part 91 being flight procedures and regulations, part 149 being the self-managed organisation. There's not many differences. They're both based on competency and what that means is that um, they might say that this course runs over 20 hours but each one of those hours a student must meet certain milestones to move on to the next stage. So instead of 20, you might do 30 or you might do 40, depending on how much work and effort you put into your training, how much practice you do. Uh, modern flight simulators these days are very good and a lot of them are programmed with the actual training syllabus. And so if you were to practice and practice and practice, that's gonna save you money in the long run with how much you spend on obtaining your license. What it comes down to is a choice. So we have two pathways. We can choose Recreational Aviation Australia or the General Aviation Pathways, which is CASA. They both end up at a private pilot license standard. So from, from RAOs, we can go Recreational Pilot Certificate, Navigation Endorsement. We can convert that to a Recreational Pilot license with controlled airspace. And then after passing all the exams, do a private pilot license flight test. The Recreational Pilot Certificate or RPC involves a minimum of 20 hours flight training which includes 5 hours of flying by yourself to obtain some more confidence. So 15 hours with an instructor, 5 hours by yourself. What that allows you to do is fly within 25 nautical miles of your aerodrome where you've conducted the flight training. Every one of these hours counts towards your General Aviation Recreational Pilot Licence. A cross-country endorsement can then be added to the Recreational Pilot Certificate, which is about another 10 to 15 hours of flight training. What that allows you to do is fly to all the minor aerodromes around Australia. Once we've completed our cross-country endorsement, we just need a little bit more solo time to get more confidence and then we can carry passengers by the way of a passenger endorsement. The typical Recreational Pilot Certificate for RPC will give you about 20 hours, $7,100, including four exams. A cross-country endorsement's about 13 hours, $4,600, um, and there's one exam for that. And then we want to convert across to the CASA or General Aviation land. The RPL or PPL conversion's around 15 hours, costing $6,000, and there's one exam for that. Please take note that this does exclude theory exam costs, books, medical fees, any other requirements that was there. This is just based on the flight hours that are required. If we look at general aviation to the same pathway, we go on CASA, we do the recreational pilot license, we add the license navigation, and that will bring us to the private pilot license as well. Once we get to the private license, that is the first internationally recognised qualifications. Overseas licensing doesn't um, appreciate recreational pilot licences or certificates. I will mention that the recreation RAOs side of things requires you to have a membership. It's around $330 a year. The best thing about that membership is the pilot insurance that you get with that. So if you injure yourself during flight training, if you trip over some ground equipment and break an ankle, the insurance that's offered by Recreational Aircraft Australia and their membership is well worth it. Once we've completed our private pilot licence in any manner, whether we've gone recreationally or general aviation, we can then work on getting our commercial pilot's licence. That will allow us to operate commercially within the industry and finally make money from the qualifications that we've gained. The recreational pilot licence in CASA is a little bit more involved. It's about 30 hours of flight training. Again, you get to fly within 25 nautical miles of your aerodrome. We add the private pilot licence to that. That allows us to fly anywhere in Australia, including the major aerodromes then. That gives us our controlled airspace. And then what to do with a commercial licence, well that's up to you. We said there's many pathways once you've got your commercial licence as to where you want to go and work. When it comes to the CASA licences, the recreational pilot licence can be completed in 30 hours as the minimum hours, costing around $13,000. There is four or five exams included in that um, to get to that stage. If, when we go moving further on into the PPL or the RPL, so you can add Recreational Pilot Licence Navigation or you can add the PPL. We've quoted the same amount of hours, um, about $7,800 or $7,900 with either the PPL or the RPL Navigation exam. So you get to choose which way you want to go. Um, people have the choice because the PPL exam can be quite difficult. 
compared to the RPL navigation exam. Once we've got to this stage in the PPL, we want to become a commercial pilot. There is certain hours that you must have to be a commercial pilot. Uh, in the non-integrated course, which is the only one we offer here at Advanced Aviation Training, because it's the only one we really believe in, it should be 100 hours of piloting an aircraft by yourself and 100 hours of dual instruction. Once we get close to that, we start the commercial conversion from PPL to CPL, which is 36 and a half hours, uh, about $36,000, and there's seven exams that need to be completed through CASA. What that doesn't include is the extra command time that you will need between PPL and CPL. So basically you get your PPL, you need to go and practice with that for about 60 hours, and then you need to come and do the commercial conversion. What we like to do here is the combination of both licenses. So we like to go through Recreational Aircraft Australia, get the RPC and NAV, do the RPL conversion, and then move into the private pilot license. It is a little bit cheaper overall when you get to your commercial license, but that's not the main contributing factor. The main contributing factor is that you get two qualifications for the price of one. There are many, many pilots around Australia working as Recreational Aircraft Australia flight instructors, and as such, they've made a career of that and businesses out of that. So there is that path. And if you haven't, if you've just gone through the whole general aviation ecosystem, that is not readily available to you without going back and doing more training. So it's best to get the two qualifications from the get-go, make yourself more employable in the industry with more options. Once we've done that, we do the PPL and then, as we said, onto the commercial licence. Looking at the training overview, uh, the costs are slightly reduced, so we're looking about three to $4,000 difference between the combination of both and just doing the CPL, which is a little bit more costly. As I said, increased options for flying, more employment options, extra qualifications, uh, and proficiency on different aircraft types. When you are in that building your hours stage, as discussed between the PPL and CPL, having the Recreational Aircraft Australia certificate will allow you to get access to more aircraft types. It doesn't matter what type of aircraft you build that command time up in. Some of it can be in gliders, some of it can be in RAIs, some of it can be in general aviation. It's entirely up to you where you get that experience. There are certain requirements that need to be met, as in the, the size of some navigation exercises, how much cross country or navigation time you have. But having the recreational certificate obviously gives you more options, a lot more options to access aircraft at a cheaper rate to build up that command time. Any more information, visit us at advancedaviationtraining.com.au or better still, give us a call and uh, we can answer your questions directly. Our phone number is listed on our website. Thanks for watching.